Most of us like to collect things, and some of us have quite a dose of that instinct. Some folks collect stamps, others collect cigar bands or autographs, a pocket full of junk, or dollars and dollars. If your collection is larger, even a shade larger than any other like it in the world, that greatly increases your happiness. And that's from Alfred Kinsey in an introduction to biology. My name is Chris Johnson. I'm the collection manager for the Division of Invertebrate Zoology. We estimate the size of the insect collection at the American Museum of Natural History to be about 18 million. The size of the gull wasp collection, it's over seven and a half million. So at seven and a half million specimens, you see that this family is certainly the largest single group. I'm Jim Carpenter. I'm the chairman of the Division of Invertebrate Zoology and Peter J. Solomon Family Curator of Hymenoptera. The primary part of our gall wasp collection is the Kinsey collection. Alfred Kinsey was actually a famous sexologist but he was also an entomologist before he studied human sexuality and he collected gall wasps. Shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves. I have to admit, just myself, I can't imagine how ginormous his operation must have been to do what he did. It's just astonishing. Kinsey's first scientific paper was published in the Bulletin of the American Museum of Natural History and those associated specimens were already here. So in 1958, after he passed away, his wife donated the bulk of his collection to the museum. Kinsey actually traveled throughout the United States through 36 states, over 18,000 miles, just collecting plant material and then taking that plant material into his lab and then actually reared the wasps from these galls that he collected. Now what galls are, are plants induced tissue. The female lays her eggs into plants and after that the larva hatches, feeds on that tissue and then the galls are brought about by the plant's response to larval saliva. Once you see a gall and you notice a gall in a plant, you will never not see them again. And they can be on leaves, they can be in branches, and if you start looking at galls and you see the incredible diversity, it's just spectacular. It's, some of them look like echinoderms, some of them look like fuzzy caterpillars. Some of them look like bits of fluff. Some of them look like goiters. Some of them can be quite tiny. Some of them can be quite large. My name is Christine Lebeau. I am a scientific assistant in invertebrate zoology. The Kinsey donation is so large that it hasn't been entirely unpacked. So we've had volunteers and interns work with us over the years to slowly unpack the remaining boxes. Back in Kinsey's time, it was, of course, part and parcel of insect taxonomy to gather very long series of a single species. In the case of making measurements of species, which was one of the things Kinsey was doing, well, the more the merrier. Collections are more useful if there's material from across the entire range of a species because variation in structure, in physiology, and genetics can occur in response to uh, environmental differences. One of the good things about having so many specimens is you can look at differences in what is being collected over time. You can correlate it with weather, with temperature, with rainfall. Another advantage of the size of this collection, the sheer scale of it, is the possibility of ancient DNA being found. Ancient DNA refers to the DNA in preserved specimens and the ancient is relatively speaking in this case. In recent years, with the development of uh, better technology, it's becoming possible to get DNA out of preserved insect specimens. But particularly for small insects, and we are talking small in the case of the gall wasp, typically you have to destroy the whole specimen to successfully amplify DNA from it. But we have such large series of so many of those species that the destructive sampling of, of some specimens is of no concern. We can loan out 10,000 specimens at a time. We recently had someone borrow 10,000 specimens for their PhD project. New species are being published on. Uh, about a year or so ago, a researcher in Spain named a wasp after me 
Andricus Leboe, I believe is the correct pronunciation. Like, what does your wasp look like? <laughs> Small and brown, just like the others. But I certainly started as an insect collector when I was a teenager in the hopes of making a large insect collection. The larger it is, the more likely it is that you'll have more species. And that makes it more complete. It's supposed to reflect actual diversity of nature in the world.